Please, Philip said, knowing it was pointless. His dad replied patiently, I don't have any. Honestly, if I did, I'd hand them over without a thought. So how am I supposed to persuade a woman to sleep with me? Are they only after one thing these days? It's all they think about. Having kids is all anyone thinks about. Sorry, son. I keep trying, but as I said, it crashed while I was registering you, and now it won't let me back in. It says our combined digital profile has already been used. Philip shrugged. It was a familiar exchange, one they'd had every Saturday night since his 18th birthday, weeks ago. The implant under his skin tingled with alert after alert, teasing reminders of his estranged friends as they arrived for the Saturday night warm-up parties. Successfully registered as fertile and mature enough for parenthood, they were raring to go. He ransacked the kitchen cupboard where his brother's fertility food had been kept. If only he could find a small spillage, it might be enough to switch on his suppressed gene and make him fertile. But no, nothing. He'd go to the club as usual, and, as usual, he'd be an outsider. The front door shut behind him as he left the house and headed to the forbidden place. Adults only, the sign embedded in the pavement in front of the single black door, lit up as he came within touching distance. Horizontal neon blue bars appeared across the doorway, crackling and barring his entry. He snorted. The original technology had been designed to wipe out mosquito populations, and the reference to killing unwanted bugs was far from subtle. Oh, what he would give for some fertility food. A small snack would suffice, enough for an evening, enough for a chance, enough to do the deed and become an ex-virgin on the cusp of parenthood. Noise from a group on their way to the party grew louder, laughing and shouting, even screaming with delight, he presumed. How could they be considered mature simply because their fathers were competent at interacting with an artificially intelligent database? He hurried away. Worried he might meet someone he knew and have to face the excruciating embarrassment of forbidden entry, not yet mature. Sitting behind a low wall, he let out a rapid series of shallow breaths, desperately trying to keep calm. At the other end of the street, the entrance to the main club, was buzzing with low-key chatter from those who were already parents. They called themselves the procreators but he called them the grown-ups, and he ached to be one. Kicking the fragments of stones that littered the dusty patch at his feet, he looked to his left, to the hopeful virgins, and to his right, to the smug parents. Was he destined for a life on the outside, a life devoid of sex and kids? The thought of spending his time with the excluded, the genetic dead ends, and the forever immature made him cringe. They were the no-hopers, without fathers to vouch for them, or with mothers that refused to give their consent. He hung his head in shame, shaking it in disbelief. Through the dust, he noticed the uplifting scent of lime and basil. He inhaled deeply, enjoying the contrast with how he was feeling. Assuming it was the perfume of one of the passing procreators, he held his pose, staring at the floor. A small cloud of dust was dislodged as someone sat down beside him. He kept his eyes firmly fixed. They nudged him in the arm. How tedious. It was either a self-satisfied gloater or a simpering, sympathetic do-gooder. He ignored them, kicking the stones with even more force. They persisted. He ignored them. They continued to nudge him. He looked up. She was gorgeous, sitting there next to him with a crazy but charming grin on her face. You'll never pull like that, she said, and nudged him again. Funny, he replied. She inched her way towards him until their arms were touching. They sat until she broke the silence. Seriously, she said, there's more to life than that place. Joanna, by the way. He shrugged and hung his head, his hair covering his face. She nudged him again, hard, 
in the ribs. Come on, you're a good looking guy. Why don't you come back with me? To where? Place of acceptance. No matter whether you breed, have sex or not, live alone or with people. Place of choice. Her smile and her confidence and her beauty were getting to him. A chance to couple with her was an extremely enticing offer. If it was an offer. I'd simply get up and come with you. Is that how it works? He said. Never to return, he added as a joke. The grin left her face. Yes, she said. If you want kids, we have our own homegrown fertility food. If you don't, it's not a problem. Really? He almost choked in disbelief. Fertility food for anyone? She smiled. As long as you can persuade someone to partner with you. He sagged. She smiled again. Oh, come on, Mr. Downtrodden, it's hardly going to be a problem for you. She kissed him on the cheek. I don't know, he said, and looked across at the club. I'm not sure. A noisy group of young procreators stopped in front of them. Get a room, one of the women shouted, and then laughed. A heavily bearded man grabbed Joanna by the wrist and turned her hands so her mark would show. Virgin or procreator. She had neither. An immature, he asked. She sneered back. I thought so, he said. From out there, one of the free sex brigade. Peeping toms, weirdos, shouted the woman. Joanna pulled her shoulders back in defiance and stood up. Philip joined her and shoved his virgin wrist in the face of the idiot, shouty woman. I hope you lose your maturity rating and your kids are taken away from you, he said through gritted teeth. He smiled at Joanna. Shall we? My pleasure, she said. She grabbed his hand and gestured to the procreators with a single middle finger. Philip grinned and copied her. She was one of the people his parents had warned him about, the ones he'd often wondered about. It had never occurred to him that he might get to meet one, to run away with one. As they walked through the boundary gate of his community, the general purpose implant in his fingertip, the one that every citizen was fitted with at birth, vibrated. A sharp pain shot through his arm and then another in his leg. The implants were closing down, disconnecting him from his community. The possibility to become recognised as an adult was being severed. In a panic, he scratched at his skin frantically, trying to stop them. She looked at him in amazement. Well, they weren't going to just let you roam free, were they? She said. All over his body, his implants ceased to function delivering their final sting of shutdown. And the last to go was the direct one-to-one -one connection with his father. Thank you.